things aren't little after all They all add up even though they're small We recommend you don't deny them Get off your ass and try them They're bigger than you think The Little Things Welcome to our series, The Little Things, where like the song says, the little things aren't little after all. They all light up, even though they're small. In this series, we're going to show you the little things that we've gathered through the years that will make a big impact in the way that you make music. This episode is going to be all about the snare drum, and let's face it, we all love the snare. It hits about twice a bar in most songs, so it better sound amazing or your track won't. The first tip that I've used for years isn't a Dr. Bob original, and I actually stole it from a famous L.A. session drummer, Mike Baird, in the mid-80s when I watched him play in the studio on a solo record for Air Supply singer Russell Hitchcock. Oftentimes we try to get the ring out of the snare in the studio, but as other instruments start to play along with the drums, I find that the mid-range of the keyboards, and especially the electric guitars, soaks a lot of the snare ring up automatically, and the snare starts to disappear. The ring and the snare drum is going to be one of your best friends when it's time to poke the snare through a dense mix. So what about this ring can we utilize to make it sound to our advantage? Let's find out. Here is what I stole from Mike Baird. Before I start recording drums, I always find out what key the song is in. If you're unsure about the key in your recording session, just ask a producer, guitar player, keyboard player, whatever. Once I find out the key, I go to a piano or play on my iPhone the root or tonic note of that key. So now that we know our song's in the key of G, let me hit a G on the piano and start tuning the snare drum to G. For example, if the song is in the key of G, then G would be the tonic note or the root note in the key of G. Once I find out the key, I tune my snare to the root note of whatever key the song is in. In this case, I would tune my snare to the G in the middle of the piano. You should always have several snare drums in a recording session to please the producer or the artist. And with one of these snares, you should be able to tune accordingly to any key and still keep a nice resonance in the drum. Great, I think we're close. So now let me pop the snares back on and let's play it in the song. Okay, cross your fingers, here we go. Let's hear how that sounds. Now that we've tuned our snare and played it in the track, there's one more step. If you're playing a live kit, only use the snare top mic for this next thing. No snare bottom mics, overhead room mics, whatever. This needs to be a mono signal. Now turn the strainer off so there's no rattle and no strands touching the bottom snare head. Next, double check your tuning to make sure you're still tuned to G. Now overdub exactly what you played in the original snare part with the snares off this time. Once you played the part through, You'll need to use your preferred software to align the snare with the previous snare so they're phase accurate. The other solution to this, which may be simpler, is to just sample the snare with the snares off and then trigger this sample with the original snare part. Now we should have two channels of direct snare, one with the snares on and one with the snares off. Let's put them in the track and see how it sounds. 
Pay close attention to the stop at the end of this clip where the snare rings through the hole. Had we not tuned the snare to the key of the song, we could have exposed a real dissonant snare ring and our lack of attention to detail. So why is all this so important? In the key of G, the note G resonates well with almost any chord that would be in a typical pop rock or country song. Assuming that most of the songs have the one chord, the two minor, the four, the five, and the six minor, the note G rings nicely under any of these chords. Therefore, when it's time to mix and your snare isn't ringing like tinnitus, and you can utilize that ring to your advantage, you can turn it up without a dissonant ring against the key. If you're not playing with live musicians and you're programming the song, the same principle applies. Just tune the snare to the root note of the key and you're set. In the key of G, let's listen to the one chord, the two minor chord, the four chord, the five chord, and the six minor chord all played over the note G. Clearly, you can hear there aren't any dissonant rubs, so tuning our snare to G is beneficial. Boom, there you go. A nice cracking, ringing snare with two different channels to have control over the ring, and a ring that sits nicely against all the other instruments and the singer because it's tuned to the root note of the key. I can't tell you how many engineers, producers, mixers, or other musicians have commented how amazing my snare drum sounds. Well, now yours will sound that good too. Just tell them it's an old trick you learned from your doctor. Operating room scrubs and beard rental can be costly. Since starting this channel, we are 1.8 million in the hole, but you and only you can help us recover from this financial disaster. Please hit subscribe below, it's free, and it helps us and helps you to know when the next surgery is available to watch. Thank you for watching Music Surgery with Dr. Bob. In music and in life, the little things aren't little after all. They all add up, even though they're small. I'll see you the next time the doctor's in.